if you had looked at Wensum, that functions help when you open the screen on the left side bottom there are a lot of functions. Uh, we have seen a few of them uh, pulse, step, uh, random normal, if, if then else, min, possibly is a max. There are so many other functions which if situation demands it just go over those list and see whichever is applicable we can use it in our model. There is one other way in which this kind of a non-linear functions are captured within our uh, model. One is of course, if we know the analytical expression we can always put it y equal to whatever uh, uh, x power z or something then we can directly capture it within the model. But many times such an analytical expression may not be available for us. So, in those cases either we use min max kind of functions or we use what is called as the table or lookup function. So, for second example we will study how to model table or lookup function. Table lookup function is, is to capture the non-linear response function. We do not know the analytical expression, but we can somehow guess the shape of the function and we are going to include it graphically or uh, using several point, points or several pair of points are going to be given. So, basically what we are going to do is give several set of points for inputs and outputs of the variable and when simulation model runs it is going to extrapolate or interpolate between those variables and give me the output response as simple as that. So, if I know the shape of the function then I am going to uh, feed those pair of points in my model and it is going to interpolate or extrapolate. So, simulation model then creates a curve through these points which is used to determine necessary values to run the simulation. So, today's class we will learn how to implement this table or lookup function in Wensum with a different example. So, we will get familiar on how to input it. For this uh, we will take up a non-inventory kind of an example. We will move into this uh, rat population growth model. This fair bit of text yeah, bear with me and just go through it. An experiment has been conducted on population of rats. The rats are kept in a controlled environment of area 11,000 square feet with sufficient food and water supplies. Soon the population began to thrive. New rats were born, old ones died after an average lifetime of 22 months. No migration or predation of population was allowed. The experiment found that population density affected infant mortality which reduced the birth rate, but the death rate remained unaffected. Initial rat population was 10. Assume age does not matter for reproduction, male female ratio is 1 is to 1. Also normal rat fertility is 0.4 rats per female per month. We need to build a stock flow diagram of the model. This is actually based on a paper. So, there are some assumptions given. No migration which we just saw is controlled environment, ample and sufficient food supply and the infant survival multiplier. Let us say how the infant sub, uh, survival affects uh, is affected by the population density. That let us assume it is given by this curve right here. Rat population density is in the x axis and that gives us an output of infant survival multiplier according to this particular curve right here. We do not know the analytical expression for that, we just know this curve. So, what we are going to learn is how to input this curve directly in our Wensum model uh, is what we are going to see. So, as density is large, the survival multiplier goes down. Uh, if density is low, then everything survives because on the topmost y axis it is 1. Okay. So, this dots you see on the lines are the actual points. So, when I simulate if a density is between any two points it is going to interpolate, if it is outside the range it is going to extrapolate the last two points. Okay. I hope everybody knows how to interpolate and extrapolate. Good thing is you do not need to do it, Wensum will do it. Um, we have zoomed in view of the same graph along with all the numbers of inputs and outputs. Okay. We will model this in Wensum using what is called as a lookup function. So, uh, but this is just one parameter within the entire model. We have the remaining set of model which anyway we have to model to make our life uh, easy. Partial model of it is already available. Please download it. If you already downloaded it, open it. This is the entire equations underlying it, but the model if, which you have downloaded will not have any equations in it. 
please write the equations as per what is shown here. Again here the stock is shown as a D of rat pop, so differentiating it based on birth rate and death rate. So, the stock here is represented in this format. So, using this equations and the constant parameters are also given, you may go ahead and write the equations except for the last one infant survival multiplier which is a function of the density, density is nothing but population divided by area, do not write anything there, do not need to open it because I have not shown you how to enter a table function. So, you finish all the other uh, equations, okay, no need to give the equation of infant survival multiplier, but for all the other variables ensure equations are given, written or the constant value is mentioned. The initial rat population is 10, initial rat population is 10 that is also mentioned. So, first before we go into that let us just quickly look observe the model, so that we can get a feel of the kind of behaviors of a population of at a birth and death rate very simple model. So, either we need to get an exponential growth or we are going to get a exponential uh, decay, however there seems to be some population density affecting it. So, we are going to expect what kind of behavior as a carrying capacity of the system affects my birth rate ok. Let us assume infinite survival multiplier is 1 initially ok. So, if you look at the equation birth rate will be rat population into sex ratio which is 0.5 multiplied by rat fertility which is 0 0.4. So, and uh, so rat population is 10 to 10 into 0 0.5 into 0 0.4 and on the right side we have death rate which is 22 months which is greater 10 by 22 or 10 into 0 0.5 into 0 0.4. So, birth rate is more than death rate right, assume infant multiplier is 1, if anything complicated we just what do we do analytically we assume it is 1 and get rid of the multiplication effect which is there infant survival multiplier is 1. So, its effect is made redundant. So, birth rate is more than death rate, so we need to get exponential growth correct. The previous slide we are seeing that as the density becomes larger my multi infant survival multiplier is going to go down to up to 0.1 from 1 it is going to 0.1. So, the same model if I multiply it by 0 0.1 at the extreme, so that means my death rate at that point is going to exceed my birth rate, once death rate exceeds birth rate then I am going to get a exponential or goal seeking behavior. So, what is the final behavior? It has to be achieved initially we just saw if it is 1 I am going to get exponential growth, but later final stage it is going to get death rate is more than birth rate, goal seeking behavior, so that means it has to be an S shaped behavior right. So, why I am saying that is that is important because if you have to construct this infant survival multiplier that is what we will do, initially infant survival multiplier will be large because birth rate is larger than death rate and uh, initially there is no restriction, so it can keep changing. Later when the density is going to reduce my birth rate that will indicate it by increasing the infant or uh, reducing the infant survival multiplier from 1 to a very small number logically if it becomes 0 then death rate is very high right. So, it has to come close to 0 or whatever is the value. So, this is how we will argue to figure out what kind of shapes we can get and think about it not many other shapes are possible in case of such uh, how density affects it not many other shapes are possible because you have first values are 1 up to the density up to some point it will be 1 when below with some density it will be some small value. So, how many shapes of line can we draw connecting these two points? Not many, ok. So, that is the logic it is going to work. So, to input it, open the infant survival multiplier dialog box and do step 1 first, then step 2, then step 3. In step 1, you have to change the drop down to say with lookup. And in step 2, ensure rat population density is 
inside that with lookup and then 3 click as graph got the next dialog box okay. Next dialog box you need to enter the numbers the input output combination we gave the few slides earlier I have just replicated it here or reproduced it here. So, you just manually type it 0 then write output 1 enter this input and output what is shown in pink circle you can set that y max and x max. So, that you can start seeing the graph similar to that the x axis goes in the increment of 0 0.0025 0 0.0025 0 0.005 0 0.0075.1 it goes in increment of 0 0.0025 is increment size in x axis y axis goes kind of non-linear you have to see it. After you finish do not click ok just keep the screen open do not click ok. I am sure you have written the few values. Remember as you go down you have to add there will be 2 entries with point 0.1 the starting there are 2 entries with 1 as you go bottom there will be 2 entries with point 0.1 on the y axis I just scrolled it. So, if you go look at the scroll bar here it is starting with 0 here but it goes only to point 0 0.025 actually it goes up to point 0 0.0275 the scroll ball went down to add one more point you have to just use this new area. Any reason why we are doing that why we have two values at the end with point 0.1. So, that if x axis that is the population density uh, grows more than that still my uh, infant survival multiplier will be point 0.1 else you will interpolate extrapolate the last two values and will further decrease if you do not want it then we need to ensure that it extrapolates correctly. So, you got this finished it then you can click ok and click simulate and see the results those who are simulating I hope you get a S shaped curve observe the inflection point what is the point of saturation of the population from 10 where does it saturate what kind of behaviors that occur you can observe that you can observe how birth rate changes you can observe how death rate changes. So, you can observe this when does population reach stability what is stable size when is the inflection point we can try a few what if scenarios also what if initial rat population is 0 then we do not expect any dynamics right we just multiplied by 0. So, no dynamics occur what if initial population 150 rats or 250 rats what kind of dynamics occur do we still get S shaped just check for 150 and 250 rats population to see whether we will always get S shaped or is it beyond the inflection point and is stable population the same in all the cases or is it different the stable population affected with initial population you can simulate it. So, what we have seen is another way to simulate S shaped growth we had seen a few ways to simulate S shaped growth. So, in this case in a shaped causal link there is a net rate affecting my stock, but then the stock affects the on the carrying capacity in turn influence the net birth rate which becomes a negative feedback loop which becomes a dominant loop and net birth rate goes down. So, here we have captured how that relation is affecting the net birth rate in a non-linear fashion explicitly the non-linear function is shown explicitly. In the examples that we studied, I think we had a simple uh, relation for population where it just went uh, from to 1 to 0 to just simulate it. The shape of the curve is quite similar, except it is more realistic now where it goes from 1 to point 1 in a nonlinear fashion. Yeah. So, this is how we build various kind of nonlinearities within our simulation model, including capturing this table function. Many times you will find it quite useful because the relationship between the many variables may not be explicit like if I want to model the effect of workload on the amount of hours worked on the fatigue in those kind of scenarios I might actually need to 
think logically and come up with a non-linear kind of a graph based function instead of a uh, analytical expression. So, in those cases this kind of models are quite useful. So, let me uh, stop here, thank you.